my last video I showed you how to make this cattail shelter for survival situations and I had a lot of great comments on uh, the video and one that uh, sparked my interest was a guy named uh, Troll Dragomir and also comments left uh, under that by Billy Berger on Primitive Pathways and obviously uh, you can't build a fire in this because this is basically dry uh, flammable material so if you build a fire in there there's a good chance you'll catch your whole shelter on fire but what Billy and Troll Dragomir talked about was building a fire, heating up rocks, and putting rocks in the middle of the shelter. And since this is so well insulated, it will heat up really warm in there. And uh, they say you can almost use it as a sweat lodge. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to build a fire, heat up rocks, put it in the middle of this, and see what the temperature difference is. It's just got above freezing here. It's in the low 30s right now outside. So we're going to see if we can get it to a nice, comfortable temperature inside. So here's my backyard fire pit. As you can see, some of the rocks are sticking out of the snow here. And it's gonna be difficult to build a small fire right on the snow. So as always, you need to have your fuels ready uh, before you get that ember going. It's very difficult to get an ember going with a hand drill. And you have to have all the stages of progressively finer material up into the thick stuff to get your fire going. And obviously, we need to insulate this fire from the snow. So I'm gonna build a base layer out of some dry uh, wood here knock the snow off the best you can. So uh, as I was collecting the cattail leaves in the last video, I found this wrapped in one of them. It's a bird's nest. So these make perfect uh, tender bundles for a friction hand drill friction fire. And inside this uh, fine little bird nest of grass, I have cattail char. Cattail char is the char from the cattail fluffy flower. I have a video on how to make that. And once you get your ember in there and get it going, uh, it will last a long time. That char can catch a coal and keep it. So it's always great in your primitive survival kit to have some char. Uh, in the toughest situations and conditions, you can get a fire going if you have some dry char going. I'm gonna make sure that I have my little uh, grassy bundle here of cattail leaves that I can set this right on and get it going when the time comes. Here's my hand drill friction fire setup. We're gonna get this fire going. This is a dry cattail stock and I have a uh, fireboard here. I got this from Jeff Martin at Primitive Lifeways. He has a YouTube channel and a website and he sells these primitive fire kits. So if you want to try this method, check out Primitive Lifeways uh, and uh, get one of his fire starting kits. So I'm going to start this cattail friction fire up at the top of my uh, stick here and just going slow using the whole motion of my hands and uh, getting the dust built there on the, the little fireboard, uh, getting it hotter and as I go I'm going to go faster and push down harder. I've already cut in a circle and a v-notch. What that v-notch does is as you twist this uh, cattail hand drill, uh, fine powder and small amount of charcoal is going to collect under here and as it heats up it's very flammable it will start to smoke and then an ember will form. And to help catch that ember, I'm gonna use some of this cattail char that uh, is very good at holding an ember and just place it right below there. And we're just gonna start twisting this, hopefully get an ember going in this little um, char and dust here. And then you use a little stick to gently transfer it over into our tinder bundle, get this going, and then we'll transfer that to our main fire. So I'm gonna work on this. Uh, it's kind of breezy, which is, in the winter and the snow and the breezes, some of the hardest conditions you can do. See, I'm already getting smoke there a small amount. And I'm also building that dust. Having that char there is really helpful for catching that flame. You don't want to panic on this stage. Sometimes it helps with the smoke to blow from the bottom. But we have a flame.
This should be a good enough fire to melt all that snow in the fire pit. These big logs have been burning a while and they're starting to make a really nice bed of coals. So the next step is to take this rock here, it's a little bigger than a soccer ball, and we're going to throw it right in the middle and getting it heated up. And uh, hopefully after a while it will hold that heat and we'll move that rock into our cattail shelter and see if we can warm it up enough where you could sleep through the night and have a nice cozy shelter that's insulated without having a fire but having a heated rock. That way we won't burn down our cattail shelter. Um, you want to be careful whenever you throw rocks on a fire, especially river rocks. If they have steam in them and they heat up rapidly, that rock could explode and send uh, really hot fragments of rock into your face and burn you and hurt you. So I'm going to throw this rock on there and then just leave it and not go by the fire a while and just let it cook and hopefully it won't explode on us and crack. And um, since I've been doing kind of extreme survival here with cattails lately, well this time of year in the snow there's a great carbohydrate source in the roots. Uh, a lot of times it's hard to find wild edibles in the winter, but if you find cattails, you can go down and those roots store those carbohydrates for uh, preparing that plant to grow in the spring. Sometimes there's also little uh, shoots underwater too, and you can eat those as well. And so we're gonna go harvest the cattail roots right now, and I'm only doing that because we have this hot fire to come back to. In a survival situation, if you don't have a fire, you'd never go digging in uh, through the ice to get food in the cattail roots. Uh, it would just be too much of a risk for hypothermia, but it'll be a good test now. So we're gonna throw that rock on and then go harvest some cattail roots uh, in the frozen pond. Throw that right in the middle. We'll let that rock continue to heat up and just get uh, full of heat where we can transfer it to our shelter. So I'm going to back off of that so it doesn't explode and uh, let's go get the cattail roots. So here's what the cattails look like. Uh, you can see the flowers there that are, have the fluffy little uh, tops on them and the dead leaves that are folded over. And uh, they're in a, about three or four feet of water and there's the ice on there. So I'm going to have to break through and get pretty wet and cold, but we'll go get some of those roots. This is what we're looking for, this taproot right here. This is kind of like a rhizome, and it grows along the bottom. Awesome, we got a bunch of roots in here, and we got uh, shoots on this as well. These are full of carbohydrates, and it will make a good meal. Let's go cook these up. So here's what I pulled out from the mud under that ice water that was cold. And uh, you can see last year's cattail stalk is starting to decompose. And then right under the mud you'll see these fine root hairs. And then also coming out is a lateral runner. And the lateral runner is starting to have next year's cattail shoots on it. This runner is full of carbohydrates. And all you have to do is roast it on the fire till the outside's charred and then the inside will be kind of this gritty white flowery powder. And that's full of carbohydrates. It doesn't taste amazing, it's pretty bland, but it's uh, calories when you need them most in a survival situation. And uh, you can also eat these shoots too, so they're nice and tender. We're gonna throw these right on the coals and roast them. I have a video on eating cattails and one thing you need to note is there is a look-alike called yellow flag iris, which is toxic. It's a poisonous look-alike, so you need to know for sure that you're harvesting cattail roots and not yellow flag iris roots. Check out my other video to see the difference between cattails and yellow flag iris. I'll put the link in the description below. But because I know from the stock that uh, this is connected to that is cattail, and we'll throw it right on the fire. We got a good bed of coals, and my son came out wanted to roast some marshmallows, so we'll roast cattail root and marshmallows right now. You don't want to burn them completely, so we'll be rotating these and watching them, but uh, just cook them right there on the hot coals. These cattail roots have been roasting on the coals a while, and they're nice and charred on the outside, and they're ready to eat. I'll move these over to the snow to cool them down and then show you uh, how to get the food out of the roots. And what you do, you just peel out this charred area, 
You can see these long fibers in the center just have this uh, white powder coming off. That's the carbohydrates. You can separate them out and uh, make a flour out of them and make a bread. Or you can just chew these. You don't have to swallow the fibers, but you can chew off the carbohydrates and get a good food source in the middle of the winter when you need it the most. To move our heated rock, uh, since it's so hot I can't pick it up, I'm going to make a little makeshift carrying basket. Uh, really primitive and crude, but I got these flexible sticks here. I'm just going to lay in a cross pattern. We're going to weave them together and set that rock right in the middle and then fold up the edges and use that as a handle. So I'm just going to make a big star here. We'll roll that rock right in the middle. Our big rock has been uh, sitting in the coals a while and it is very hot. And it is cracked a little. It's starting to flake off the edges here. I think that's just the rock type. Uh, a lot of rocks, if you just set them by the fire before you throw them in the coals, for a long time they're less likely to crack but uh, this one did pretty good it held up it does uh, flake off on these layers like an onion almost but we're going to roll this rock now onto our little makeshift basket and move it over to our uh, cattail shelter Boy, it didn't take long. That is putting off so much heat. There's steam coming. This is almost like a sweat house in here. And when we put that door on, uh, I think it will really trap in the heat. I'll have my boy put on the door. Hey, Sterling, can you put the door on the cattail shelter? Uh, yeah, okay. We'll have to tighten that up a little bit, put some more cattails around the edges, but for the most part, there's no snow in here, and this is putting off a lot of heat. This would be a very comfortable place to sleep as long as you didn't roll over into the hot rocks. But uh, what a great shelter and a great system for staying warm. After about an hour of putting those hot rocks in the structure, the temperature's risen over 20 degrees and it's still rising. I think if you had more rocks, you could really hold in the heat. This thing really is well insulated and that means a comfortable night's sleep all night long in freezing conditions if you build a fire and put it the hot rocks in your structure. Huge success. Thanks for the suggestions in the comment box and it was a really great experiment to try.